Hello, my name is Daniel P. Lopez. I'm the author of 10 published books, and my newest book is called Dark Path. What is Dark Path about? What led you to this path? Dark Path is the third chronicle of my life series called The Dark Chronicles, and it basically is the aftermath of what happens after Dark Stranger, my second chronicle. And basically, to go back before Dark Path, in Dark Stranger, I met um, two, met two individuals, one named Damien and the other was named Hector. Damien was someone that I started to see, even though he was a person who did drugs and was older than I was. I was only 20 at that time and he was 31. But he lived with a man who, who was in his late 40s and who had full-blown AIDS. And they used to be in a relationship together, sexual. Hector used to pay Damien for sex, so Damien was... A whore, you could say. But when I came around and started seeing Damien, they were no longer together, even though they, they still lived together. But to make a long story short, basically, Hector hated me because I was being with Damien. I was, like I said, I was 20 years old and I had my whole life ahead of me. I was happy and healthy and I was everything that he wasn't. And he was jealous of me. He hated me for those reasons, and that was a re those that was a reason or what planted the seed for what came later on of why I felt they put a contract on my life to to ruin my life, to destroy me, to change me into someone something worse, basically to make my life a living hell. And there were I figured out why they did put a contract on my life, basically because I was being with Damien, basically uh, I mean uh, and. There was some things that someone else did that I was close to that kind of triggered more reason or hate for why they put a contract in my life. But basically, I just got involved with the wrong people, people who had these connections, mafia connections, what Damien used to tell me and threaten me with. But I didn't know that it would go and escalate as far as it went with this contract because it just... I didn't know about these things before then. And, you know, had I known, I wouldn't have ended up with a contract on my life. But basically, after they put this contract on my life, that was when the paranoia, the dark paranoia kept, um, came in, you know, in my mind, in my life. It started with paranoia, thinking people were out there watching me, following me, putting things into my food, into my body, drugging me. I felt that they were not just hurting me, but my family. I felt that everyone who knew me or came into contact with me knew about this or was with it. People were, I felt people were profiting off doing things, de degrading things to me, to my body, or just by what they were basically watching me like a show, watching my life fall apart and the way it turned into because of this contract that Damien and Hector put on my life. So I lost jobs. I grew distant towards family and few friends that I had. You know, it was a very rough time. There were so many times where I, I wanted to die. I wanted to kill myself. And but then there was also revenge where I felt like I wanted to get back to get them back for what they did to me. And it, I talk about that in my book, Dark Stranger, but obviously I didn't go down a path of revenge. Well, and then later on, I felt that like a year or so later, I felt that there was a computer chip put into my brain by these people who I felt were the government and the mafia and everybody else. I felt that they all worked together and like some kind of society or or crew or organization that basically lives to destroy and ruin people's lives. And I felt I was I'm one of them because of this contract that those men or not even men, those two individuals put on my life for the stupidest and selfishest reasons because I didn't do anything to them. And I don't know if Hector is alive to this day. I know I'm pretty sure that Damien is alive, but if someone asked them like what I did to them for me to deserve a contract on my life to change and destroy and ruin my life for the rest of my life, I'm sure they, would, they wouldn't they would even give know what to say because I didn't do anything to them. 
I just got involved with the wrong people. And now I'm paying for it. Now I paid for it dearly with all the things I went through in Dark Stranger and in Dark Path. So after I ended up in jail because of them, I owed money to the court from a shoplifting charge and from a driving with a suspended license charge that a fine that I never paid or went to court for. So I owed a lot of money to the court over a thousand dollars. And at that time, like I said, I had no job because I lost my jobs. I couldn't be around people. I was estranged from my family. I was distant. I was lost. And so to make a long story short, after I turned 24 in, De in September of 2000, after I saw a show on, on cable called Queer as Folk, I remember it, it kind of just gave me an inspiration for me to go out and try to live my life like the way they were living it. You know, when I saw on um, that show, I saw the good, the good gay life of the friends, the parties, the clubs, the sex, all that stuff that I wasn't living or doing. I wanted to be live that life like a normal, healthy 24 year old should live their lives. So basically, when I came to West Hollywood for the first time, a few months later, I started coming to Hollywood more and that was when I started hustling on the streets of Santa Monica Boulevard, hustling basically to survive, to pay these bills because I had no other way of making money or to support myself, to eat, to you know survive. I needed this. I needed to do this for those reasons and that's how it started. Why did you end up on the streets? I ended up on the streets because of all the paranoia that I went through because of Damien and Hector, it really, it really messed up my mind where I couldn't be around people. I couldn't hold jobs. I couldn't, I didn't, I, I thought horrible things towards people, towards myself. And it was just a rough time for me. That was why I ended up on the streets. What experiences did you learn while on this path? While I was on the streets, I met many different men and most of them just used me for sex just basically just used me and dumped me off on the street like a piece of trash back then when i was 24 years old i was a lot thinner and i was a lot i looked very young for my age so there is many many men who 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 wanted me but they just used me for sex you know none of them helped me or wanted wanted to get to know me or wanted to be in a relationship with me it was just i was just used and dumped on the street back on the street tell us about the paranoia and delusions like i said before the paranoia started in the summer of 1997 when damien and hector put this contract on my life and ever since then i was living in the dark and with a, a dark cloud always lingering above me where it just changed my life for the worse, made me a person that I didn't want to be. And the delusions, there were so many things that, that I thought that I, they were, uh, that affected the way I lived my life. You know, it was, even though they were in my, most of these thoughts were in my mind and I had no proof to them. It was just, it affected the way I lived, you know, tell us about Orange Grove. When I was a youth living in Orange County, I used to want to be an actor. I wanted to be an actor, a, a star. I wanted to make movies and direct, write my own movies, direct my own movies, be a star, you know, live the glamorous, rich life, you know, travel the world, meet other stars, all that stuff. I wanted, I wanted to be those things. It never happened for me because the time I met Damien and Hector, I felt that my life and my dreams were taken away from me. I was the one that came up with the name Orange Grove because just like I wanted to be a star, I also wanted to be in a bilingual rock group that I named Orange Grove. And it, during these dark times was when I felt that they made whoever they are, this, these people, the, the society or the organization with the government and the mafia and everyone else, working together, I thought that they created a dark conspiracy, which in my book, Dark Path, 
I, I talk in depth about this dark conspiracy where basically I felt that they made me into a fake celebrity. Since I felt that they were watching me 24 seven since 1990, the summer of 1997, I felt that there were not just people watching me like a show, but I felt that they were making movies off my life and releasing them to the public for most of the people who didn't know this or know the truth. So uh, if it was almost like I was this up and coming star and then the band Orange Grove came in with at paid actors who were paid and just to act as imposters as if like they knew me or we were a band, a real band when we weren't. And basically they were they were chosen and because because of what they look like and who they look like. And I describe all that in my book, like in, in Dark Path. And basically, to make a long story short, for three and a half years, they were faking it. And using, with the chip in my brain, they were able to pull this off with digital technology and with, with, with other actors. And it was a big conspiracy. And there were other people, in, a lot of other people involved. And it was just basic with, you know, stunt, not stunt doubles, but like, adult uh, just someone who looks like me someone who sounds like me it was all all part of this sh fake show that they were putting together but and i felt that they were waiting for me to kill myself or to go down a path of revenge with damien and hector obviously it didn't go down that way i never killed myself i didn't go i didn't take a revenge on damien and hector so they i felt that they faked my death in March of 2001 and I felt that after they faked my death the, the rest of these guys in the band I felt that they they just were hired to shed fake tears like they knew me or cared about me when they didn't and lying to the public basically and and then after that they were, they were just they were the ones that were able to go on and prosper and live the dreams that I only dreamed of in my dreams. They were the ones who get to, who were, who got to make movies, make videos, make music, travel the world, meet other stars, live the good, glamorous, rich life that I only dreamed of in my dreams and the life that I felt was taken away from me. So there is a lot of hate and anger towards them too, not just Damien and Hector and the few that surround them that I felt were the re people that put a contract on my life, but. I, I was living with so much hate and anger, and that was how I was living. These are just a few of the things that that I thought and went through in my mind during these times of dark path almost 20 years ago. What person or persons stand out in this chapter of your life? One of the first persons that stands out in my book, Dark Path, is a guy named Devin, who I met almost halfway through the, the book. I met him. Devin was also a street hustler, but unlike me, who didn't do drugs, he Devin did do drugs. But the thing about him is that Devin was a nice guy, even though he did drugs. He wasn't like Damien, who was an evil monster. Basically, Devin was very nice to me, and and the first night we spent together in a hotel, you know, I felt that he he wanted to get to know me. He he made me feel special by by the things we talked about, him asking me questions, wanting to get to know me. You know, he he made me feel special. He And when we had sex, you know, unlike all the other guys who just used me and got got themselves off, he he was he was doing it in a way where he wanted to please me, too. And I remember he told me that had he if he could spend enough time with me, he would fall in love with me. And I remember that at that time, it really touched me emotionally because no one no one had ever told me something like that before and that and that was what i wanted i wanted to be loved you know i remember that when i met damien a few years before that that was what i wanted i wanted a friend a companion a love interest someone to love me the way i could love them and it's sad because I ended up in the dark because of that, because of those reasons, be, for wanting to be loved. As gay as it sounds, as sad as it sounds, 
that's the truth. I ended up in the dark with a contract on my life because of me wanting to be loved by someone. So when Devin came around, you know, I wanted to get to know him deeper too or more. And But the sad thing was that because of his drug problems and hustling problems, he was he was constantly in and out of jail. So I didn't see him that often. And when I did see him, most of the times we had a good time, you know. But we didn't, for his drug problems, it just, it couldn't go any further. And I explain our relationship in the book. Another person that stands out in the book is, is a person named Matt. And Matt was a man that I met during these times. And I remember he wasn't a, he wasn't a hustler, but he was someone that I started to see for a short period of time. But for reasons I explained in the book, our relationship quickly dwindled away and he didn't want to, we didn't pursue a relationship for reasons that I mentioned in the book. But basically, he was someone that I wanted to get to know too, but it just didn't happen. And then the third person that stands out in this book is the man named Roger, who I meet towards the end of the, the, the book, towards the end of the story of Dark Path. He was someone that, he was really the only person that I met during these times who, who invited me into his home and into his life because no one, no one had ever done that for me before that, no one. And I was lucky that I met him and that he, like I said, brought me into his home and into his life because by the end of the book, I found so, almost like solace or cl closure for this chapter of my life where I could put that, that dark path behind me and pursue a relationship with Roger. And that was how it ended up. Why did you choose to publish and tell your story? The reason I chose to publish this book is because I want people to know me, understand me, where I came from, how, why I ended up who I ended up. And in my first chronicle, Dark Stages, my fir the first sentence reads, everyone's life is a story to tell. And that is true. Everyone's life is a story to tell, but not everyone tells their story. Not everyone wants their story to be told, but I do. I want people to know my story for those who want to know it. It's just, in a way, I feel because all the dark things that I went through, there was something that, there was light at the end of the tunnel because my life did get better. My life did improve. My life did improve. And, and here I am 20 plus years later living still living, still fighting, still, but I'm living a much better life. And a lot of that had, had to do, has to do with, with meeting Roger. Is the trauma that affected you in the past still affect you now? The things that I went through 20 plus years ago, the paranoia, the delusions, the madness, the anger, the hate, all that stuff. Yes, I still think about those times and I still live with them. But even though I'm on medication now and I'm a much better person and stronger and I've learned to cope with these thoughts and delusions and I live with the medication, it, it tones it down. But the medication I take doesn't doesn't cure these thoughts. It just kind of, like I said, tones it down, makes me live life, makes me function and live life as normally as I can. And now, you know, I am a much better person. I have a job, I have friends, I've done things that I didn't get to do back then and I'm happier and healthier. So, yeah. What comes next in the Dark Chronicle series? After Dark Path ends, the fourth chapter or the fourth chronicle of the Dark Chronicle series is comes out and it's called A Light in the Dark, which is my life with living with Roger. And basically, like I said, he was the only one who, who brought me into his life and into his home. And my the A Light in the Dark book is basically my story with him. Even But even though I'm still living that life and story, someday I will publish that book. And, and But I just want people to know that even though, yeah, there's been a few bumps on the road during these 18 years that I've been with Roger, there's... um. There's a lot of happiness. There's a lot of, there's light 
more light than there was before in Dark Stranger and Dark Path. So there's hope for me and a chance of a better future. And it's all because of meeting Roger. If you would like to know more about my books or want to read Dark Path, go to my website at www.danielplopez.com. And there I have information about my books. You could buy the books through the website. I have interviews and videos on YouTube that you could see and watch. And if you want to know, if you have any questions or want to know anything about me or have any suggestions or comments, feel free to email me at dplbooks at yahoo.com. Thank you.